Hi everybody, welcome to BTS 36 for March of 2008. 36 videos, that means this month marks the three years. We've done this for three years. Three years ago I was a little bit heavier than I am right now. Um, and a little less wiser, but that's okay, you know, that's how life goes. Good to have everybody. For those of you who are here for the first time, welcome to my world. Those of you who have been here all along, thanks for hanging around after being part of my world. You guys know what you're really in for. Um, anyways, yeah, this month uh, and next month, I want to take some time to look at how to do music with animation. Uh, and we're, this month, we're going to talk about uh, history, theory, principle, how to understand music, um, talk about some of the challenges of it, and then next month, we'll take everything we learn now and we'll apply it to a quick little example scene where I can kind of talk my way through how I broke it down and kind of look over my shoulder, as it were, you know, and kind of get a figure, uh, get a feeling for how to figure out music. Easy for me to say, okay? Uh, so without too much more blathering, blabbing, and wasting of time, let's get into understanding where we came from with music. Okay, music and animation. They've been tied at the hip since 1928. Okay, uh, there's there's this uh, concept that music and animation are very similar art forms, whereas music is a flowing art form that has a kind of a rhythmic flow to it and has all these different layers of things going on, but it's something that you perceive with your ears. Animation is very similar. It's a flowing medium, but it's one you just view with your eyes. So the two of them together, flowing together, kind of creates this really neat experience um, as far as storytelling or even communicating of ideas or even just something cool to look at, okay? So way back when animation was just starting out in the early 1900s, um, the technology for film at the time didn't know how to put music on the film strip. So what they would do was, you know, the silent movies. They'd have guys run around, they'd have an orchestra down in front um, or a piano player or an organ player down in the front of the movie theater and they would kind of play along to what was happening on the screen. Mm, okay, I guess. But in 1928, um, along comes this uh, clever little fellow called Walt Disney and this interesting little character called Mickey Mouse. And they decide to put music into the actual animation itself. And nobody had ever done it before. So people were thinking at the time there was a concept, this is impossible. It can't be done. But they figured out a way to do it. Uh, and as time went by, Disney and then, of course, Warner Brothers and Lance and MGN and all these other places that did these old shorts and old, uh, the short films especially started to really, really nail down how to do music and animation. The thing is, for the most part, the stuff was not pre-scored. What does that mean? Um, pre-scored means music is already written before you start animating, okay? Um, but the stuff flows like it was. Okay, uh, the best way to describe that is when you watch the animation, the timing of the actions and the motions and the gestures and the, and the cuts and the timing of what's happening, the rhythm of the visuals is in sync with the rhythm of the, of the audio. But the visuals were made first and then the audio was made second. And you're thinking, well, okay, that's easy enough, we do that today. But it's not the same, because today, what you see, especially with short films, I, I see it a lot now, and I've noticed it um, even in my own work, and earlier work, is you see, you know, animator making a little short film, and then at the end he hands it off to a composer, and the composer tries to make the music fit the flow of the visuals. And a lot of times they don't play, they don't play nice. That's where you get this kind of disjointed, syncopatic kind of like the music feels forced like it's you know you, you it's a square peg trying to fit into a round hole and, and, you, and the music just doesn't flow with the visuals and then overall you're kind of like that oh, was an okay experience but it just isn't the same okay you can get away with more cinematic kind of things like that if you if your uh, film has is a, is a grand scope and has a has a flow of motion that's more live actiony um, an example of this would be Rockfish that, that we worked on at Blur, which is a, you know, a fun little sci-fi piece of, uh, you know, eye candy animation. And um, the story in that is very cinematic, okay? And because the story is very cinematic, a cinematic score goes along pretty well with it. Cinematic scores, can, a, lot of, a little bit of slip there, you know? Live action, you don't, you don't expect an actor 
to hit a particular beat of, of music when they look. But classic animation has that kind of, con, you know, texture to it. It's very connected, okay? And that's, we're not seeing that very much done these days. In fact, hardly at all. And the reason why is because the music animation is kind of a lost art. So down through the years, probably, you know, the advent of television, when things kind of got, you know, really, you know, animation kind of went into the toilet, and a lot of the knowledge that used to exist in the 30s, 40s, and 50s kind of just got lost by the wayside as all these old artists and their trainees kind of ended up doing slap -a dash Filmation, Scooby-Doo kind of stuff, okay? And there was a gap there of about 15, 20 years where this stuff is just, it just didn't exist anymore. Nobody was making short films. Uh, nobody understood the concept of how to make animation work with music. It was just kind of like make the cheap animation, slap some audio on it, put it out there. And we've been there kind of ever since, especially for short films. Um, and so there's this gap where we don't really know what's going on. Um, but let's go back and say, well, well, before I go back, let me describe the typical workflow of an animator today who has to do work, work with music. If the music exists already before we start animating, usually what an animator will do is they'll kind of scrub their way through the audio track in Maya or something like that. Because most, most CG programs these days can drop in um, the audio track right in your timeline and you can kind of scrub it and listen to it. And I know for myself, whenever I had pre-existing music, I would go and try and find the beats by trying to find them, listening to the track and I'm like, okay, frame 20 sounds like a beat and then scrub, okay, frame 32, 31 sounds like a beat. And it's very tedious. It's very, very tedious just to try and have something feel like it's hitting. The, the best example is, is if you ever have to make a character dance, okay? Um, if you ever have to make a character dance, which is probably one of the hardest things to do in animation, um, then, and you've ever had to do it this way, you're in for a very, very long, long, long project. Um, I did some scenes, of course, working at Big Idea, where we have to make VeggieTales dance. I mean, these are just vegetables, and it was challenging enough just to get those things to work. That's because at the time, I didn't understand how to break down music, and how to make something work, whether the music, I can hear it or not. Mm, now, here's the thing. All right, so, and if the music doesn't exist, then the animator just generally kind of animates the way they want, the timing works whatever they want, they just do things however long they think it needs to be done, they hand it to the composer, and the composer's like, there is no rhyme or reason to what's happening here. I mean, there's a reason the character's doing a certain thing, the character does, it's clear animation, perhaps, usually, we, you know, from no sound, we can watch it and we say, oh, the character's doing this and then he's doing that and I understand he's doing this. But from a musical standpoint, there's no rhythm to it. All right? And so that's where we kind of have to understand getting the animation to flow with the rhythm of the music. Backing up. All right, way back in the day, these guys would sit down, these directors of these short films uh, in Disney and also at Warner Brothers, they would sit down and they would say, okay, um, this part of the, the film is at a pretty medium pace. And then right here, it's a little bit of action, so we, you know, we kind of ramp up the drama a little bit. So we're going to make that just a little bit quicker. And then here is a big flurry of action, uh, you know, in the main conflict part, so we'll make that really, really fast. And then we'll kind of back off and go back to the normal stuff to kind of wrap it up. How would they do that? Well, first, they would just kind of break down the, their, their story and say, we need medium, quicker, really fast, medium again. And they would determine this by how the music would play. Okay, now anybody who's taken a little bit of music, that's pretty much a lot of people, you understand that music works in measures. Okay, you got a measure, and inside the measure, depending on how many beats are in the measure, you have notes. Okay, the typical measure is 4-4. Four, four, okay, four notes, there you go. So quarter notes, one, two, three, four, and your measure, depending on the music, could be uh, in time, could be very quick, or it could be very long. So understanding with music, these guys would say, okay, well, let's make these, these charts called bar charts. Now, nobody uses bar charts now because we just don't. Uh, but bar charts was a way for the director to sit down and say, okay, for this measure of music, um, we're going to go at this pace. And it would actually kind of diagram out the basic animation on a piece of paper that said the music will be this pace and the animation will be at this. And they would do their cuts, they would mark it out on, on, on the piece of paper, they would, they would show where, the, where the, uh, a scene would begin and a scene would end. 
Um, they would also mark out on the piece of paper, corresponding with notes of the music that doesn't exist yet, uh, where, where particular high pieces of action would happen or specific events or whatever. Uh, again, bar charts are pretty esoteric. Um, they were very, very common in the 30s and 40s, especially at Disney's, but we don't use them much anymore. Um, in fact, nobody uses them at all. Very, very few people understand. It's, like, it's difficult to look at them and read them. There's not a lot of people who can look at them and read them and understand what's going on. I don't even really totally understand when I read some bar charts. And I've tried to learn in, in the last year or so how to read them. And it's a pretty weird way of working. There's going to be a simpler way for us, okay? It comes down to understanding two things and how to correspond them, all right? There's two things. In music, you have beats per minute. And in animation, you have what we just call beats, okay? But beats per minute is very much a musical thing. Anybody who's done any music understands beats per minute, okay? That is, how many, to how many times in, a, in one minute of time does music hit a certain rhythm? Okay, and beats per minute is a very common, simple way that all musicians understand to measure how quick, how quickly or how slowly a piece of music should be played. Okay, beats per minute. The more beats per minute, the faster it is. The fewer beats per minute, the slower it is. Okay, so a waltz will have a slower beats per minute, whereas, um, you know, let's call it a samba, would be fairly quick, okay? And then heavy metal would be like, you know, okay. So that's, that's the idea. And then in animation, though, we don't really work in terms of minutes, and we're kind of down in seconds, and we've got these seconds broken up into 24 individual pieces called frames, and so we need to figure out how to get beats per minute into frames. So once you understand beats per minute and how that translates into frames, you can sync things up, okay, without ever hearing the music. And this is the cool part, okay? So let's take a few minutes, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you how to find beats per minute for a piece of music, either one that exists um, or, you know, one that you would like to have written later. Because here's the thing, okay? Here's the really cool thing. If you want to make a piece of animation and the, and the music exists, you can use certain tools to find out what the beats per minute is for that music, and then find out what the corresponding beat is in frames per second. And then you can animate in such a way that you don't even have to listen to the music. You just have to make sure that your actions and your cuts happen at certain intervals of frames. And then once you put the music to it, it's going to magically seem like it was perfect. Okay? Which is really cool. Or if you are, say, a short filmmaker, or you want to do a piece of animation, but the music doesn't exist yet, your composer will send you flowers, <laughs> okay? They will send you, they will say, you're the greatest guy to ever work with because if you understand how, what your beats per minute is for, or what your beat is for your animation, you can then turn around and say to your composer, this whole thing works on X number of beats per minute. And that gives, and that gives him a, a, a framework to understand how to write the music. And trust me, composers love any help they can get because a lot of times they're just given something and they're, they're asked to make, you know, they're asked to make a steak out of hash. There's just nothing there, okay? So anyways, let's take some time and we'll look at how to find what beats per minute are in existing piece of music and then how to translate that into beats in animation, you know, the 24 frames per second range. And then we'll take a look at some really simple examples with a walk. Okay, I got two different, three different speeds of walks, and you can get, kind of see how that works and some other examples. And then when we're done with that, you know, we'll just kind of uh, wrap this up, and then next month we're going to get into it. But anyways, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to get ahead of myself. So let's take a look at this. Okay, see, the thing about the thing about music is it has, you know, time. We go from zero seconds to, to one second. In animation, we represent that by frames, zero frames to 24 frames. 24 frames, I'm just using that because that's, you know, what we do in film. So 24 frames in one second of time. Now, in music, we determine from the start until the end in one second, uh, you know, how many times do we get a beat, okay? Now, generally, beats per minute is something that we do, but let's break it down. You know, we can do beats per minute and... and break it down by dividing it by 60. The simplest beat format is what you would call 60 beats per minute, okay? Meaning one beat every second, okay? That's, that's pretty simple. One beat every second. So that means you would have 
one beat every 24 frames. Okay, so um, what we have then is a 60 beats per minute equals a 24 beat in animation. Okay, all we're doing is we're taking the 20, you know, the the beats per minute, and we try to break that down into terms of frames. Um, you may say, well, what's the point of doing that? Well, it helps us know what we can do. Let's say we have some music that is 60 beats per minute. Okay, 60 beats per minute, and let's say it's 4-4 time. Let's go ahead and maybe clear all this stuff out. And we'll break this down, and we'll just kind of draw right here. Um, let's say we have music that is 4-4 time. Okay, and in music world, that is, uh, you do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... That means in every measure you're going to have four quarter notes. Okay, real, real simple stuff. Da, 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 da. Okay. So what we want to do is in time, what we, if you were to break this down in sheet music, this little piece of action right here would be one beat, and this would be another beat. Okay. So this is a beat, and this is a beat. And if this happens one per second, that equals 60 beats per minute. You may think, okay, Keith, we get it. Well, it's good to know because if we have one one second, one beat per second, or 60 beats per minute, then we know that each of these things is also going to be 24 frames. Okay. Let's say we have four four time, and we want we want to have a character do something that's fairly quick. And we want to hit or accent each one of these notes, just for giggles. All right. So let's say we have a piece of animation, and we want the character to, to knock on the door in time with these notes. Well, what we do is every, you know, take this 24 and divide it by 4. Okay, so 24 divided by 4 gives us 6. So every 6 frames, we can make the character knock on a door. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, every 6 frames, we have the character knock on the door. So it would be pop, 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 pop. And we can animate that without ever having to listen to the music. Why? Because we're able to take and understand how many beats per minute are involved and what that turns into. And the cool thing about this is, is that any, any multiple of this will work. So if you have a 24 beat, so we have a 24 beat, and um, you can do anything... On, on any level. If you want, you can do stuff at 12 frames. You can do stuff at uh, 4 frames, very, very fast, okay? Um, you can do stuff at six, 6 frames. You can do stuff at 8 frames because these are all easily divisible into 24. And what you can get then is any animation accent you make in 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 your work without again listening to the to the music. If you have a if you have a 60 beat per minute um, piece of music, you have a 24 beat to work with. So you can animate any way you want. You can animate the character doing anything you want. And all, as long as you hit the beats, you know, the animation accents on any of these multiples, it's going to line up with the music. Okay? Now, it, or at least if you don't, if you have the music ahead of time, you want to break it down and find out where, you know, where these things are. And that's, that's fine, but at least you'll have a framework to work from. Okay, if you have a piece of sheet music and it tells you that there's a half note and then two quarter notes, well, you'll know then. Okay, for that particular measure, um, let's say we got a let's let's go ahead and draw that out. So we got a half note and we got two quarter notes. Okay, and that's that's our four beats. And let's say our, we're on a 60 beat per minute thing here. Okay, so we're at 60 beats per minute and we're at four four time, and we have a half note and a full note. So in animation in our in our 0 to 24 here in this particular range or wherever this happens to occur in your animation in your scene file what we can do then is we know that the half note could be at 12 frames okay and then each of these quarter notes well actually the half note would be from uh, let me do this so we can see it we can, the half note would be from here to here okay and then the quarter notes you'd put this at 18 okay and so the quarter notes would be from here to here, and then from here to here. So anything you did, the character can start at 0, hit an accent at 12. Let's say it's a moving hold, okay? And then they want to 
turn and do something. Well, you can just have that turn happen in six frames and have them hit a pose here, and maybe hold it, and then start something different. Or a good way to look at this is maybe we got a, a character who's doing a moving hold, and they're going to, and the music's held there, so it's like the, the moving hold, and then the character turns, it's in time with this note, and then the character holds again, and then we cut. Okay? This allows us to understand how to animate the things and make sure that we're hitting the multiples the right way. It's, it's, if that was confusing, back it up and play it again, and just think in terms of, I mean, this is, like I said, kind of mathematical and a little, little drawn out, but the idea here is pretty simple. You understand the basic underlying structure of what's happening mathematically inside of the music. And if you learn how to understand what's happening in the music, then you can start understanding where to put your stuff as far as notes are concerned or, or actions. Actions correspond with notes. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead and, and, and maybe do another example of this. Um, let's say we have a piece of music that is, again, at uh, 60 beats per minute. And so that equals a 24 beat in animation. All right? And let's say it's 3-4, all right, which means if you, have a, if you have a measure of music, you're going to have three quarter notes. That's just the way it is. 3-4 okay? music is pretty common. This is actually a, a formula that was used quite a bit in, um, in the Warner Brothers stuff, you know, Termite Terror stuff. They did a lot of stuff at 3-4 time on, on, on 24 beats. The reason why is because it broke down really nice. Um, you can do anything on every eight frames, and it kind of lines up with the notes. Okay, and you can then, if you want really fast things, you can break them down into on onto, on the fours. So well, let's 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 just take a look at this. So, some frame zero to frame twenty-four. Okay, and somewhere along this continuum, we have a twelve, and we have six, and we have eighteen. Okay, and somewhere in between, yet still, we have eight. And we have 14, and we have 20, and we have 4. Okay, this you can break this down, not 40, 4. Get rid of that. Actually, maybe I could just use the eraser. Ooh. All right. So here we go. If the music is 3, 4, then we can take this and break it down so that we know that we can hit notes, of course, here. But... We could also hit it on 8, and we can hit it on um, the 16 as well. I mean, 16 is somewhere right around here. Um, 12, that should have been 16, not 14. Sorry about that. So we can hit right here at 16, which would not space properly, but you get the idea. We hit the note here, here, and here for these three notes. One, two, three. This happens in one second. This happens in one second, so we can have a pose, a pose, a pose, or a gesture, an action, or whatever. And you know that you can do this at the, you know, frame zero or wherever you're at in, in as far as the music lines up. So somewhere in this second of animation, we can hit boink, 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 and it would line up with the music. Let's say the music doesn't exist, but you know this is what you want to have in here. Maybe you want to have something that's three-quarter time and 60 beats per minute. Now you can animate, and you can hit things at this level, or any multiple of them. You can hit stuff at four, or you can hit stuff at, uh, you know, 20 if you want, because, you know, it breaks up nicely. Um, because, of course, you know, if you take 24 and divide it by 3, you get 8, okay? So 3 beats per minute, or 3 beats per measure on a 3-4 time into a 60 beats per minute, so 24. So you got our 24 divided by 3 gives us a structure of 8. So you can hit stuff on 4 because, you know, 4 is half of 8. So if you want to do stuff really, really fast, like say he's sneaking, you know, do, 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 do. they do that all the time with, um, you know, the violin plucks for a guy sneaking across the floor or something. You can just have him, and you can have him do every sneak on fours. So he would, you know, you'd have a sneak pose at four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and 24. And so you can have all these things and you can have them sneak across the floor in one second, knowing exactly which frames you can put those poses on. And it will line up on a 3-4 time where the guy can just hit 8th notes. Boop, 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 boop. And, it, and it's perfect. I mean, if you go back and watch uh, Warner Brothers stuff, you'll see this happening all the time. So understanding the structure of the music helps us understand where to put the animation, okay? Or where to put the poses or the gestures or the actions. And it really is just a simple matter of math. 
you want to make sure that you understand that you want your your beats per minute has to be translated into an animation beat once you understand the animation beat then you can start breaking stuff down and start uh, applying things in such a way and you want to you want to work in multiples okay so um, we'll get, getting back to this other point before I back to here where I was saying if the music doesn't exist if you animate it and you give this to a composer and you say to the composer we're on a we're on a 60 beat per minute three quarter time for this stretch of the film he'll he'll thank you he'll be like this is awesome this is the best thing I've ever worked with because composers aren't used to getting stuff from animators that is actually pre-timed to music now it's gonna be easy for him to make music fit your your short and it's gonna be cohesive okay um, coming back to here beats per minute to beat the whole idea of a, of a of understanding what the beat is in animation is just understanding the math of the structure of what you're trying to do so if you have a 24 beat you can do anything that's a multiple of these of, of 24 if you have a 12 beat which is really just a 24 beat quicker then you can do anything that's a multiple of 12 which is pretty much the same thing as a multiple of 24 if and if you want to do something that's a little you know a little more off the wall you can do stuff that's a 10 beat and if you want to do stuff really fast you do stuff that's an 8 beat uh, Disney generally used these these two quite a bit, and then for super fast stuff they would do that. But generally, Disney would start off a short film, you know, a Mickey short, and working at 12, and then it would ramp up to to 10, um, where the beats would get faster, and therefore more things were happening quickly for a bit. And then during the the big conflict or climax stuff, they would do eight. So it's really really fast. You know, if a character's running away or you know they're being chased by something, the stuff's happening at eight beats. Uh, or, or on an 8 beat, meaning one measure of music is happening every 8 frames, okay? One measure of music is happening every 10 frames, or one measure of music is happening every 12 frames, or one measure of music is happening every 24 frames. And on the on sheet music, that helps us understand what's happening in the sheet music, okay? So if you see, you know, notes, you can understand, okay, this stuff, I have to make these notes fit into one of these structures based off of how fast it's playing in time okay sheet music is one thing you can play a song quickly or slowly okay this these notes don't mean time these mo these notes just represent what what the musician has to play for instance you can do uh, Beethoven's fifth symph symphony is real simple we understand it dun 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 pretty simple right but you can do it quickly too. Da 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 dum, da 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 dum, or really slow. Dun 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 dum. The the thing is, the music on the sheet is the same. Okay, the notes are the same. How fast we choose to play them gets translated into this thing of time beats per minute. So that's what we need to do. Let's figure out how to find beats per minute. Okay. The best way to find beats per minute is to use a metronome. Okay, now there are cool digital metronomes like this one. Crystal Metronome is a very nice little tool for Windows. Um, it's not very expensive, it's shareware. I think it's um, $30 or something. But the really cool thing is it will it gives you different presets and stuff, and you can just choose different speeds. Now we've been working on 60 beats per minute, which is one beat every second, and this is what it sounds like. Okay, every second it's a new beat fairly simple right so what we want to do is we understand that what we can do with this thing's pretty cool it has divisions so if you're working on three four time you can f you subdivisions for every measure um, and actually you can do say a measure is every, uh, well we'll wait on that subdivisions you can hear it play out it's pretty cool and this right here is 60 beats per minute 3-4 time and it works out pretty well and that's the stuff like I said a lot of the Warner Brothers stuff was done like that okay this this tool also has another way of doing it if you want you can do um, a measure is every four beats or every three beats so let's say it's every four beat this would be a 4-4 four, four. it gives you a little extra high note okay now this right here is a different kind of thing it's going really, really slow. So what it's doing is it's treating everything as a, as a, as like a, 
uh, everything is like a quarter note in this. So that's why I generally don't use this one very much. I just go, because it's simpler for me to just look at it this way, and break it down like this. It just, okay, you're thinking, great, Keith, that, that doesn't mean anything. I got a piece of music I need to work with. Well, the cool thing is, is it has this tap feature, which is really kind of neat. You play the music, and pretty much you just kind of get the flow of the music, and you just start tapping your foot, you like you normally do for music, unless you're like, you know, completely not cool. But if you're going to tap your foot to the music, every time you tap your foot, go ahead and tap this thing. And every time you tap it, it kind of starts, you know, it, it fills in what that, what that beat is. Okay? And as you go along... It gives you what the what the beats per minute is, and so it'll play it. Okay, so this is a really cool tool for figuring out if you have an existing piece of music, what the beats per minute is, and if you can figure out what the beats per minute are, then you can start breaking down the math of how to where to put things as far as like you know how to break this down. So what's a what's a 94? Um, well, that's a good question. We can break that down into into frames. Okay, so what we can do is. Uh, 94 beats per, per minute is um, pretty crazy. Let me do the math here real quick while you hit pause. All right, math is done. What we do is you take 60 seconds in a minute, right? So, and then we divide that by 94 beats per minute. All right, so that means there's 0.64 beats per second. So we take this as a multiple, 0.64, and we multiply it times 24 frames because there's a second, you know, there's there's a, a beats per second and there's one second of frames. So we multiply this, you know, take 60, divide it by whatever your beats per minute is, gives you the multiple, take the multiple and apply it to 24, okay? The 24 will give you then, you know, 24 times 0.64 gives you a, a, a 15.3 beat, which is really kind of awkward and clumsy. Um, it would... It would require you to uh, compensate because 15.3 doesn't really divide down really nice. So what you'll have to do is every now and then kind of give or take um, a frame to kind of sync it back up. Because you can't sit there and say, well, I'll treat this like a 14 beat because, you know, 30 seconds later you're going to be missing the music. So what you need to do is um, take a look at this and, and compensate for it. So what, what, what this breaks down to is... Um, you got one beat every, I would probably treat this because it's closer to 16 than it is to 14. I would treat it as a 16 beat and then wherever I needed to, probably, well, every, it's short by 0.7. So probably every second do something that's 17 frames instead of 16 frames. Um, just to kind of, to, to even it out, you know, um, just to give it, to keep it on time because if you don't if you don't compensate for the difference between this and the 16 beat which is easier to break down um, in your frames anyways but either way you could you can even just go with 15.3 and know that every 15 frames you can hit something and it's gonna it's gonna hit a note okay so you can you can make a pose or an action or a cut every 15 frames and it's gonna work pretty pretty close okay and every now and then like every three of these you'll have to do one at 16 and then you can go right back to doing it 15 because we're just kind of taking that point three and adding it up okay so that's how you do it you, you uh, let me go ahead and try this over again um, let's get ourselves uh, maybe another one that's um, maybe a little less crazy one two three four one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we've got um, a 74 beats per minute, okay? Not too shabby, okay? And the thing is, you can you, you just listen to the music and you tap. No, there was no music that I was playing. I was just kind of making something up as off the top of my head. So what we'll do is we'll take our um, 60 seconds per minute okay divide that by 74 beats per minute all right and go over here to my little calculator 60 divided by 74 gives me a multiple of 0 0.81 okay that's 0 0.81 beats per second okay so then we do 24 frames 
times 0 0.81 and multiply that by 24 over here in handy dandy and that gives us 19.5 which is a very awkward little number but again we can kinda of work with it 19.5 I would just round that up to a 20 beat okay and try and work off of a 20 beat and every now and then just compensate for a frame here and there that you need to, to give or take to get you to where you need to go so anyways that's, that's if you have a piece of music and the and the timing of it really doesn't change very much and you don't want to sit there and scrub back and forth and back and forth all day long and a million shots just to try to get things lined up this is the way to go because what you can do is you can tap it out you can you know with this fun little tool or our metronome tool you can tap it out right here and get yourself a number and then use that number to find where you can put things so let's say we take this thing and we've got a 20 beat all right so we'll take our 20 beat what does that mean in our in our animation from from 0 to 24 frames this is one second of animation right and we have a 20 beat which means somewhere right around here you're gonna get a measure okay so from here until here is gonna be one beat of the music or one measure alright so now we we can just break this down you can and you'll know by listening to the music, if you if you follow along the music, one way or the other, if you can figure out how many times, you know, if it's a three or a four beat somewhere in here, um, and the easy the easy way to do that is if you have a tool like this and you don't know if it's a three four or four four, just play this and then try that and listen to the music and see if that sounds like it's lining up right. Or try four divisions, and you just try the different you just try the different combinations and see okay the music sounds like it's going it's three beats for every measure okay or three notes for every measure um, and so you figure that out so let's say this is uh, you know this is a 20 right here let's say it's four four time meaning it's four notes for every measure all right well we can do anything we want here as long as we know that it, you know we can take the 20 and divide it by four and anything that's that's a multiple of four that fits into 20 is going to work. So what we can do is we can do stuff at frame 5, we can hit frame 10, and we can hit frame 15, and we're going to hit frame 20. All right? Anywhere in here, every five frames, we can just we can just go ahead and make make a gesture or an, or or a pose or hold a pose or start a move or hit a, an accent or do a cut or anything on any any multiple that goes into 20. All right? Now the thing is, it gets a little tricky when you cross over into a new second, but you just roll stuff over, okay? Um, because to add five frames to this is going to bring us out, you know, to 25, frame 25, all right? Well, then you just know you just keep rolling with the multiple. So you can go 25 to 30, and then 35, which is short of, you know, a second and a half, and then you can go to 40, okay? And then we go all the way up to 45, which is just short of two seconds, because, you know, 48 frames is two seconds. And then we can go to 50, which is just a little bit farther than two seconds. And then you just have to understand, okay, anything, if it's a 20 beat, I can just hit stuff on every five frames, and I'll be okay. Because those are all multiples of 20 in a 4-4 four, four piece of music, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, it just fits in there. So if we had a piece of music that had a 74 beat to it, your 74 beats per minute, we can break it down and kind of roughly estimate that it's going to be right around a 20 beat. And a 20 beat, if it's 4-4, four, four, then we can kind of break that down and, and have some fun with it. Now, if it's a 20 beat and it's 3-4, then it gets a little crazier, okay? Um, then we need to do, you know, from here, 0 to 24. And we have our beat from 0 to 20, but if it's 3-4 time, well then, what's what? Three doesn't divide into twenty very easily, but it comes pretty close, somewhere between six and seven. So what you can do is you can do something at six, you can do something at twelve, but that's leaving eight right there. So you don't want to do six and twelve, but if you did six and thirteen, it's pretty close. You're compensating, okay? So yeah, this is six frames of work, this is seven frames of work, and this is seven frames of work. And then what you do is from twenty into I don't know, the next move, which would be just do another 6, which would come out to 26 frames. You just do 6 again, and then you do 7 again, and then 7 again. So you could find a beat, and this this is how you compensate for things not being exactly right on. You can just 
you can just keep repeating this pattern every you know do do a beat six frames seven frames seven frames six frames seven frames seven frames six frames seven frames seven frames six frames and just keep going at infinitum and you're not gonna the music is not gonna slip from your animation because where it doesn't divide up really nice you kinda you're compensating in your in your making a correction as you go along so if you have three four time that's a seventy four beats per minute or is a twenty beat you just go six frames so if a character's dancing and they're gonna you know shake their hips every time you have them shake it you know, hit it at, at frame six, and the next time they shake their hip is at seven, and then the next time it's at seven, then the next time it's at six, and then it's at seven. So every, as long as it's every third one, you kind of correct, you're okay. All right. Now this is all, like I said, pretty esoteric stuff. And in next month we're going to get into, and I'm going to break it down. We're going to show exactly how it works. All right. Um, but you need to kind of understand what I'm thinking here in order for for it to make any sense when I show it there. So this is definitely going to be building on stuff. All right, well, let's take a look in, in, uh, at, at some of this in Maya and see how it can play out. All right, let's run over here into Maya and we can take a look at this. <clears throat> We've got 24-beat, um, uh, three, division, three sub, subdivisions, which means you know, it's a 3-4 time, uh, one, beat per, one beat per second. So that's what this sounds like, okay? Pretty simple stuff. So knowing that we have one beat per second, um, we can go all the way, you know, every 24 frames, we're going to have a new beat. Okay? So we know we can do stuff on 24, we can do stuff at 48, and we can do stuff at 72. Let's take it all the way out to 72 so it can loop. We also know that since it's 3-4 time, we can do any multiple um, that divides into 24 by 3, which means we can do stuff on 8 frames, we can do stuff on 16 frames, and then again on 24. So let's go ahead and just show how, just by understanding what the beats per minute is and how that translates into um, in, into frames, let's just go ahead and do something fun here. We'll just do this guy, um, I don't know, we'll just say from right there. We'll call it minus 5, and we'll set a keyframe on that. And, okay, we know we can do something at frame 8 if we want, so let's just go ahead and make that 5. And then frame 16, we'll just make it minus 5. And we know that we're going to be pretty much on time. We can do it at 5. And let's set a frame right there, and that's that's pretty cool. All right. So it's going all the way back, and then we can just keep going. Okay, another, another 8 frames would be 32. We can do that minus 5. And then frame 40, we can do it at 5. And this is just translation. Okay, the 5s doesn't, doesn't mean anything. I'm just doing numbers. Sorry about that. Um, they do the opposite here at frame 48, and then we do another five or eight frames because that's a multiple. So then we can do frame 56, and then add eight to that, so that would be frame 64, and add another eight to that, and that's frame 72. Okay. So when we get this, we play it. All right. The the just the char the ball or the character is doing something, whatever the the whatever in the animation file is doing, it's doing it based off of, you know, what I've put as far as the, the breakdown. Let's go ahead and turn on the sound, and you'll actually even see that each of these beats is right on the, right on the, right on the nose as far as um, the, the audio wave. Let's go ahead and make this thing really, really big. Okay. I said save. So as we get in there, you can see that just by just by breaking it down, I hit these beats right on the nose. See these frames? These keys are they're right on these little beats. And it's that's the really cool part about it. And we can go ahead and even just hit play. And it's a little it's a little faint. I need to turn it up. But you can you can see how it's moving in time. It might be a little bit difficult with the screen grab software. But it's moving in time to the the audio, and I didn't have to sit here and spend all this time scrubbing and finding where the beats are. Now it would it's very easy to find it on on you know a piece of audio that's this clear and simple. But when you've got a, a song in here and you got all this stuff is just filled up, you're not it's it's impossible to find where the beats are. You know, if we if we chose a piece of music and put it in there, it, you're not going to have all this silence with these very clearly marked you know, pieces of audio hits, all right? But you see, you don't, I don't even have to play it. You can see it's right on the money, 
I mean, this thing is smack dab right where it needs to be. Every single beat is bam, bam, bam. I'm hitting them perfectly because I broke it down and I understood what what the multiples are. So when all this stuff is filled up with things, and you know, you can spend all day, you know, trying to scrub in through here and, and figure out, oh, is that a beat? I guess that frames where the beat's at. You'll you'll drive yourself nuts. Whereas if you do this way, you do a little bit of math. I know math but it won't kill you, all right? You do a little bit of math, you figure out where these things are happening, you can go ahead and animate and knowing what your multiples are, and you'll be okay, all right? And you can even do things, like if you want, we can do it for, um, you know, do something fun like that. Well, maybe we'll just take our, uh, here, just for, just for giggles, we'll animation editors, graph editor, We'll take our translate Y and we'll make our translate Ys always to be stepped, okay? And then down here, and translate Y can be in Z, and put that down, okay? Well, the screen grab software is making it hard to do, but I'm, I was trying to show you that you can even do multiples of this down and down underneath if you wanted to. Uh, you can, so if you wanted to have the character kind of sneaking across the screen, um, you can do that on fours or something like that. I mean, just the whole idea here is as long as it's a multiple of what's working in here, then your composer can know, oh, okay, here I can just hit notes every, you know, if this is a 24 beat and he does this, you know, to, your composer's not going to think, oh, he's doing this every four frames. Your composer's going to think, oh, I'll just play eighth notes here because eight of them happen in 24 frames. You know, so your composer is going to look at it and say, "Oh, well, for these actions, you know, if you ha if you hold if you hold it for say um, 16, he'll say, oh, I can play.' Uh, um, or I'm sorry, if you hold it to, to 12, he'll say, oh, I'll play a half note. And then if you have a pose at 18, um, and then another one at 24, he'll say, oh, okay, I can do a half note and two quarter notes. I mean, he he'll just look at it and say, oh, I I don't have to change my timing. I don't have to take some weird bridges and do some goofy things and and kind of slap things in there and, and shoehorn things which is what he, a lot of stuff sounds now he can sit there and say oh since all of this stuff is done at a really logical way of doing things i guess since the best way to say it since it's all logical he, he can just go oh, okay well here i'll play some eighth notes to hit those notes and those actions and then here he's not doing anything so i'll just hold a half note or maybe hold a whole note and then here he, he turns and and he looks at the door and so that's going to be a quarter note but that'll be a really big quarter note because it's a big moment in the film so he can he can start designing the audio so it flows with your with your animation and it will be world's better than a lot of the stuff that's being done now. In fact, there's not a lot of stuff that's being done that looks or sounds like this. Um, like I said, it's kind of a lost art. It's something that kind of got lost back in the past. And so we're kind of digging it up. All right, so let's, uh, let's wrap this up. I did forget to mention that there is a free version uh, of, a, of a metronome that you can get uh, from Hans Perk's A Film Blog. And you can get that. Here's the address right here http slash blah 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 afilmlablogspot.com and this also will do taps okay so if you tap every four intervals it'll tell you what what it breaks down to his is a little more it doesn't round up so you kind of have to do some of that for yourself so if you do um, you know you play your music and you hit tap 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 it tells you you got a 10 beat or and you actually his is actually pretty helpful because it tells you what the beat is for the beats per minute um, and this one's free he built it for uh, for animation and it's pretty cool so if you just tap along to the music as you listen to it it tells you what you got here and I'm doing a pretty good 12 beat right there you know I'm not too far off and again you'd kinda round it up or or something like that just to kinda work with it anyways I forgot to mention that uh, Beatronome you can you can find it at uh, Hans Perk's blog and Hans has been or Hans I'm sorry he's been doing quite a bit of work on digging up these old um, bar sheets and stuff so really cool stuff you should read it up on it and get this fun little thing and um, yeah so let's move on all right I hope that was helpful um, it, for a lot of folks this is kinda of like completely new territory like I I don't really understand that's okay rewind it <laughs> that's why you get these videos right rewind it and watch it again and um, some really really great stuff to study like I mentioned is the the older Disney stuff um, 
and also the Warner Brothers stuff. The Warner Brothers stuff, I mean, there's, that stuff has a certain real basic structure to it that those guys relied on again and again and again and again because they just had to turn that stuff around so quickly. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the interworkings between the directors and, and you know, the, the composer was so reliable that it, it was just, you can count on it. And so they didn't really mess with that, that formula too much. Um, but if you, if you have access to them, go, get, go ahead and get some of the, um, the classic Disney short films. Like I have the Mickey Mouse in color um, treasure collector. You know, it comes in a you know, silver tin thing, whatever. Um, but really, really cool stuff there. And you can, you can look at some of, the, uh, some of the older color Mickey Mouse things and really, really see this, this connection between actions and beats and the music. And uh, there's, there's the... You know, The Brave Little Tailor, which has just fantastic musical integration. The other one where Pluto and, and um, Mickey are hunting a bear. I forgot the name of it, but it's a great little short film. I'm not a big Mickey Mouse fan normally, but this one was really fun. Um, and you can really get a sense of, if you watch it and listen really closely at the same time, you can like, wow, that's amazing. When he turns, it, there's a beat. Like, he's turning in time with the music, but the music never existed. This is the cool stuff. So anyways, next month we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how we're going to recreate history, but learn how to do it ourselves. Mm, very helpful. It's certainly going to be a little bit of work, but music is kind of, it, it, music isn't mathematical, but its structure has a mathematical component, okay? And once you understand the basic mathematical structure of music, and then find a way to correlate that to the mathematical structure of animation, and then you can find ways to make them sync up, okay? So, it's certainly a lot better than scrubbing in the little audio thing, trying to find, eh. Of course, you can also use X sheets. Um, 2D animators are used to using X sheets, and you can do that too, where you can sit there and go back and forth and kind of scrub it and say frame 22 is a beat, frame, but this is easier, okay? Because then you don't have to sit there and scrub through you know, three minutes of music to try and find a beat every, you know, couple of frames or something like that. This, you can just say, what's the beats per minute to the thing? Let me lay it in there and let's go. Okay. Anyhow, thanks for being a part of this. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. It's um, not exactly your typical animation stuff. There's not too many people talking about this, but I don't know. It's a, it's a lost art and it would be neat to see more people use it. And at the very least, if nothing else, if you understand the history of animation better, it makes you a better animator. Because anything that you do, if you don't understand where the people before you have been, you're doomed to really not, well, one, you're not going to benefit from everything they learned. And number two is um, you're going to have to reinvent the wheel. And we've kind of done that a lot in the last 20 years, especially in computer animation. We've reinvented the wheel enough times. So anyhow, it was good to have you guys. We'll talk to you next month. Until then, be good. Take a break. Remember, this is animation. It's not war and peace, so don't get too wound up about it. Um, life is more than your job. Go outside, breathe, and be good to each other, okay? Until then, all the best. God bless. See you later.